I am going to start class today um, with prayer. Um, out of all of the subjects I teach on, this one always grabs my heart. And it's just because I've been through some of the things that you're going to see today. And this lesson's not about me. It's about God helping us out of this. Um, but I do want to stand and I want to make sure I've prayed myself, I've studied, but I'd just like one more prayer, uh, God's blessing over the class this morning. So if you would just stand with me and uh, just ask the Lord to do His work and uh, that we'll be receptive of it. I believe with all of my being that God, there's at least one person that God sent this lesson for. Um, because I really had something else I was going to teach and God directed me this way. So I'm going to go that way. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning and I thank you, Lord, um, for your word that has delivered me and continues to do so. God, I pray that you have blessed the scripture this morning. Bless each heart that has come out on this cold Sunday morning, Lord, to worship you. And I pray to gain um, some knowledge of the word. I pray a fresh anointing on me. Dear Jesus, on, on my understanding that I could get it across to this class, I pray that you would guard my words and guard their hearts, God, that the holy anointing, dear Jesus, would help them where they need it most this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. So, I'm talking today about the giant of discouragement. And I believe that probably... Some people might fight it more, but I believe we've all went through periods. Maybe you're going through a period right now of discouragement. And I think a lot of it does have to do with our personality somewhat. Yep. And maybe what we go through in life. I get all of that. And I know there's different ways that you get yourself in the pit of discouragement, meeting the giant of discouragement. But what I like about it. It doesn't matter how we find ourselves there, God has a way out. doesn't matter whether it's our fault, we got ourselves into a mess, or if somebody else did it to us, but God has a way out. So I'm just going to give you these three verses, and then I have several verses. And I want to encourage you, if you have a pen today, and anything at all to write on, um, I do have, I'm not interested in you taking notes over my slides, <coughs> What I'm interested in giving you today is some good, encouraging scriptures. Because when the enemy comes after you in the middle of the night or whenever he does, you just have to lean on the scriptures. And I have lots of scriptures that I'll give you later on in the lesson. Psalms 40, 1 through 3, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth. I may not even get to this verse today. I doubt that I will. That's probably next Sunday's lesson, but I'll get there. He's put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. And like I said, I believe all of us have been in or maybe are in a pit of discouragement right now. Isaiah 42, 22 refers to people being in a place where you feel trapped. Jeremiah 38, 6 describes his place as a sinking feeling. I'm telling you, life can be hard, whether you're a Christian or not. Some, uh, some preachers and teachers may teach and preach that once you become a Christian, you are just in a heavenly place. I don't, I don't teach that. I don't agree with that. Because since I've been a Christian, I have met up with discouragement. I've met up with death. I've met up with things that hurt. And God delivered me out of all of those things, though. He's in the delivering business, but I believe as long as we're on this earth, I liked what Kyle said, as long as we're still in the flesh, we're going to have some battles we're going to face until we make it to heaven. That's the way I believe it. Psalms 40 uses words like slimy, muddy. And it reminds me, now I'm older, but I, and I don't even remember what Western show it was on. Some of you that remember these shows that uh, always showed people getting stuck in quicksand. Do you remember that? Some of you older ones, I just, you, some of you younger ones are like, what? But they always showed this. They always showed somebody like falling into this area. And then they just kept getting pulled down and further down, and they would stick an arm up, and nobody could get them out of this quicksand. That's kind of what the psalmist was saying. I'm just stuck. I'm in the mud. I'm in the mud. I'm in the dirt, and I don't know how I'm going to get out. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing, and boy, I do feel the Lord. You can't get out yourself. You can stay awake all night, making plan after plan after plan. 
we're kind of setting the stage for this. We're not going to stay in a pit of discouragement. So if you think you came to Sunday school to get more depressed, there's hope. Just let me, let me just kind of get the stage set to remind us. I don't like to be reminded of bad things, and I know you don't either. You come to church being lifted up. But sometimes we need things brought to our attention so God can heal them and help us this morning. That's what I'm trying to do. Worries that press down on our heads until we just feel like we're in despair. Something so horrible happens to us that we are convinced we'll never get out of this hole. We blow it so badly that we think God would rather us stay down in the dirt than help us out. And let me tell you, that is one of the biggest lies of the enemy. I have on a slide later on that every suicide note that's ever been written is signed by the enemy. Because the enemy will convince you that if you did mess up, you deserve everything you get. Well, you know what? Maybe we do, but Jesus died, so we don't. Isn't that good? I just made that up. The Holy Spirit, I didn't even have that in a note. That sounded good, did it? Yes. Our past continues to haunt us. Our past continues to haunt us, and the enemy continually brings it to our memory. And you know, the enemy really plays mind games, and this lesson is not about me. But, you know, it would be kind of difficult for you to have any confidence in me if I told you I never had a bad day. Well, how can she relate to this? Let me tell you what the enemy does to me as of late. I lost my mother a few weeks back. And you know what? A lot of mornings, Larry, he wakes me up and says, you should have done more. If you had done more, your mom might live to be 94 like Lola may. Isn't that? That's what he does to me. Yeah. And then grief overtakes me, and you know, I have to just throw the sheets back, wake Tom up in the middle of the night, and he's like, what's going on? I have to just go get the Word of God. I'm telling you, as long as we're on this earth, the enemy is going to badger us. But I'm glad there's hope, and I feel very hopeful this morning. The enemy said, I already told you that. Lying in the pit of discouragement, you keep wondering, why can't, why am I not satisfied in life? Some of you may be thinking, now why am I not happier? God's answered so many prayers. Why am I not happier? Why am I stuck? Has it ever occurred to you that God is kind of churning your heart up to get you out of that state? God, there is, there's a lot of things I don't know, and i got a slide about this later on. And there's a lot of things you and I together don't know. You may not know what job is for you. You may not know yet who you're going to marry. You may not know how retirement's going to go. You may not know how the diagnosis is going to go. But I'm telling you one thing I do know, according to the Word of God, is that He wants you out of the Murray pit. He wants us out. You lost hope. You lost your vision. You know what a pit is? A pit is an early grave that the enemy has set out for you. Now, I know I've got newcomers in here. Probably some folks have warned you about my big mouth when I get wound up. If I talk to you one-on-one, I'm pretty quiet. But I want to get the anointing, and I'm going to tell you why I've got the anointing this morning, because I know what I'm talking about. I've been there, I've done that, and I survived, and not only survived, but I'm thriving out of the pit. Thank you, Lord. He is good. Three ways that you get into the pit of discouragement, and I'm not going to spend a long time there how we get into it, because most of us know how we got into it. You want to know how you're going to get out. But I just want to give you three reminders. You're thrown in, you slip in, or you jump in. Three ways that you're going to meet up with the giant of discouragement and find yourself in the pit. And I've already said that. You're thrown in. It wasn't your fault, and it really wasn't. Now, we're living in um, the day and age where a lot of people don't want to take responsibility for anything, and I get that. But you know, there's some things in life that just was not our fault. We didn't see it coming. If we had seen it coming, we'd have done something to stop it. But we had no control over it. And I'm just, I'm a Sunday school teacher, I'm a Christian, but I want to tell you something, there's evilness out in the world. 
And there's just not nice people out there. And sometimes, not nice people, and I'm going to call them unbelievers, do not nice things to us. I'm not getting too many amens because you don't like, you don't often hear this kind of real talk. But I'm just telling you, we meet up with people, we rub shoulders with people on a daily basis that aren't out for what's good for us. Do you agree? Yeah. So, it was through. Now, I know that, and I'm not teaching in depth on Joseph this morning, but I know Joseph was a, a braggart. And I know there are people, in, and you know, he did somewhat cause himself to wind up being thrown in a pit by his brothers. But you know how mean-spirited his brothers were? Not only did they throw him in a pit, the Bible says, I just read it again last night, after they threw him in a pit, they sat down and ate lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you really think he deserved to be in a pit just because he went around bragging? They left him there to either die or to be sold. He did not deserve that. So here's another head game the enemy plays with you. Well, if you hadn't done this, you wouldn't have ended up where you were. Some of that might be true, and that's how the enemy gets to us. He'll take a fact, and then he'll blow it into the biggest lie ever was. And that's exactly what I want to get you to realize. Some things are just not our fault. Through the brokenness of sin, through the brokenness of this world, sometimes we get things, things happen to us that we just don't deserve. Some of you have been brought into the pit of discouragement because the enemy has convinced you it's your fault you're there. You've made mistakes. Uh, we didn't see it coming. The diagnosis. The disagreement, the disappointment, were thrown in the pit by other sin, and I'm going to go on. And one more thought before we leave this pit, and I would like three volunteers to come up, and all you have to do is read what's on the paper, and it's a very short little line. Very short little line, and the three things have something in common. Anybody? I know. I cannot believe this. I can't get volunteers. Okay. <laughs> I've got two volunteers. I've got three. Yeah, yeah. Now, I just want you each to pick up a paper, and I want you to read it to the class, and don't leave out the bottom line who signed it. No matter to me who goes first. There's no particular order. Look at what they did to you. You cannot forgive them. They don't deserve it. Move on. Satan. Sign to Satan. Your family situation is all your fault. You're just not good enough. You deserve this. Satan. Sorry, Satan. You made a big mistake. You really messed up. There's no way out. You're stuck. Satan. Yeah. What the three things have in common? Satan. Satan. Mm. In your mind, I want you to get this today. You know who's behind all of the discouragement? Satan. Yeah. You know how David found himself in a pit? Satan. Thank you. That, that's good. I just wanted... Sometimes I do this at school because sometimes a different voice will get your attention and I wanted you not to miss this point. T.D. Jakes said this, and I didn't get this lesson off of T.D. Jakes, but I was listening to one of his messages this week, and he said this, and I didn't know this about him. He said this that in his early days when he lived in around Charleston, West Virginia, somewhere, there was a woman who wrote an article against him, and People came by and shot up his house. His kids couldn't go to school. He said, my mother could not take walks. I was trapped in my own home. They told lies about him. They destroyed pretty much his ministry there. And so he said this, if I could meet that woman today, and he paused. And when I was listening, I thought he'd bring her neck. He would kill her. I mean, I didn't know what he was going to say. You know what he said? He said, I would take her out. I want you to get this. What the enemy means, means for our bad God will always turn it around for something good. T.D. Jake said, if I could meet that woman again today, I would take her out. I would buy her the biggest steak dinner I could buy her. I would try. 
We're disappointed. We're stuck in a rut. We've neglected to give these things to the Lord. You wouldn't believe how we veteran uh, Christians, I'll call us, will pray about everything. Protect my family, Lord. Protect my grandchildren. Protect Tom on the job. But it's the one thing that's bugging me. Get the enemy off my back because I know I did do what I could do for my mom. I neglect to pray about that because the enemy convinces me he's right. You get where I'm going with this? Yeah. Is this making sense to you? 2 yeah. Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. What's this saying? We're going to be troubled. We're going to be puzzled. we got people against us. We've been knocked down, but we don't have to lose hope. Mm -hmm. I have, I, I consider all of you friends, and I have 
been blessed with two wonderful daughters and sons-in-laws and a great husband. And I'm just going to be honest, if Tom Brown was on the witness stand today and you ask him, does Burnett ever get on your nerves? He would have to say yes, <coughs> or he would perjure himself. <laughs> now he just would, because he's got so much patience with me. And you wouldn't believe how many times I've woke him up out of his good sleep and say, you're just going to have to pray to me about this. I mean, a man minding his own business, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I, but I'm telling you, he's good to me. But I'm telling you, if I was your really good friend and I called you all the time in the middle of the night, you'd eventually get done with me. As much as you like me, you'd be like, oh, she's just, I'm going to have to, somebody's going to help her because she's wearing me out. I'm telling you, Jesus is saying just the opposite. He's saying you come to me. I am going to be with you till the end. I'm with you every inch out of that pit and I'm not let go. Once you get out of it, I'm not letting you go till we get through the pearly gates. I don't even care that they're pearl. I just want to make it. No. Oh, you and me need a Savior who keeps loving us. I love these scriptures. Some of you need to write these down. Isaiah 30, 18 says, And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy on you. I don't know if you know any gracious people in your life. It's a hard characteristic to find. But my mother-in-law was a gracious person. Steve and Tom are sitting here today and they've seen it their entire life. Ralph Brown would be making a, tr a trade across the truck lot and it'd be 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock whenever he wanted dinner and he'd just bring them right in. He'd say, Ro, eat an extra plate here. I got some fellas. They're going to eat supper with us. She never said a word. She wasn't very, she didn't talk a lot. She just set an extra plate and they would just join in. That was grace. She was showing Ralph Brown and whoever he brought in off of the truck lot grace. I'm telling you, there is one far greater than her that no matter what kind of mess we get ourselves in, yeah. the grace of God will get us out. Yeah. You say, so Burnett, does that mean if I come today, give him my mess? It's all over with. Not necessarily, but he's going to show you some favor. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know how I know this? Because I've done some stupid things in my life. And he's bailed me out. Oh, goodness. Psalms 147 tells us that he's our strong deliverer. Oh, I cry out. So here's your three ways out real fast. Whew. I'm probably out of time. I'm going to give them to you in case I don't get to each slide. Because I know some of you need this. First of all, today you need to cry out to him. That's what the psalmist said. He said, he inclined and too many heard my cry. And you say, if he already knows my heart, why do I need to cry out? Because he wants us to. He just wants us to cry out to him. Deep, Bobby, this is a deep cry. You ever been so heartbroken you couldn't pray? You just moaned and cried? That's that kind of deep cry I'm talking about. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, help me. Lord, I've made a mess. Whatever your cry is, he wants to hear it. And Psalm 72, 12. Hold on, let me see if I can go back to that. He delivers the needy when he crieth, the poor also. Uh, for him who has no helper. Sometimes in this life we think there's just nobody who can help me. I'm telling you, Jesus can. Psalms 9, 9 to 10. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in time of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in me. If you know Jesus, even if you get away from him, come back to him. He knows you by name. Doug just preached a few months ago. He knows the hairs on the he has no problem recognizing who's talking to him. Oh my goodness, I love him today. Step two, confess. Confess it all. Confess it. What kind of mess you're in? What's holding you back? What's on your heart? Who's made you mad? You can just tell it all to Jesus. We get troubled. We tell somebody off, but just tell it to Jesus. Who's broken your heart? Who's on your nerves? Who's wronged you? Who's never made it right? Give it to the Lord. And I just read this week again. You know how we get ourselves back in grace with the Lord or back in favor with the Lord? Have forgiveness for those who wronged us. Yes. Yep. And you know what? I really believe in my heart that there's a lot of people that
such wrongness that don't even realize they did. If they had known how bad we'd have hurt, they'd have never said it, they'd have never done it, they'd have never ever wanted to hurt us like that, but they did anyway. Give your hurt to the Lord. And you know what? If they did want to hurt you, forgive them anyway, because God's going to deal with them. I don't want to be the him. Isaiah 38, 17, Behold for peace, I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it. Oh, I love this, I love this, I love this. So what he's saying is, I did have peace, and then I lost it, but God gave it back to me. Hallelujah. Step three out of the pit, and I believe this is a very important part of the process. You've got to want out. And consent that I'm getting out. Now I have the anointing on me. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to get right in your business right now. You can stay in that pit just as long as you want. You can die in the pit. There's people walking around. Dead men walking everywhere. Because they've given up on life. You can be just like a lot of the world. And just go around living life with emotions. Or you can get out of the pit today. But you're going to have to warm out. And you're going to have to say, Lord, I trust in you to get me out. Regardless. And you know what you need to do? You need to put your circumstances on the back burner. Thank you, Lord. You need to give Jesus your all. Amen. Quit worrying for just one service. Quit worrying how this thing's going to turn out. And let God take care of it. But he wants to take care of you first. Yes. So while you're digging out, hold on a minute. Get in agreement with Jesus to dig out. And I'm going to give you this last, whew, this last great, great psalm, part of Psalms 103. I'm going to read this. I haven't heard any announcement, but I'd say I'm about over my time. Psalms 103, 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. You guys read this pretty well from where you're at. I want you all to stand to your feet. We're going to read this together. Shoot, Tom Brown keeps losing weight and I keep gaining, so I'm out of breath. I only admit that when I'm under the anointing. <laughs> the truth. Psalms 103, 1 through 5, let's start reading this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all my iniquities, who healeth all my Yeah. 
I mean, we need him fight. We need to fight him. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you what, I hate him, don't you? Yes. How many of you absolutely hate the weasel, the devil, the enemy with all your guts? Yes. I mean, you just do. I know that don't sound pretty. Yeah. I'm telling you, some of you this morning, I don't care if it's back here or out there, need to put the enemy in your place or in his place and lead victorious today. Amen. Consent. Consent today. Cry out. Confess it and consent. You're getting out of that old pit. Hallelujah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, we're now to say that. Yes, and the devil did hit me hard and stuff. But if I wouldn't have had God in, in my Christian friend training, then I probably wouldn't be here today. No. I pretty much know that. I mean, because yes. I went through some rough times. I'm not going to say it was easy. But like you say, when you're really, really hitting hard, then that's when you get up. Yes. You listen to a message. You listen to a song. Something to remind yes. you. Yes. Sir. That yes. 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 <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know how people get through. Oh. Without him. I don't. They're not. They're not. Very well. They're not. And you know what? I'm not being judgmental. If I didn't have the Lord, I don't know what I'd be on. I mean, I'm just telling you. 